know. Um, the Yankees hit obviously 250 this year. That was the most that they had hit since yeah, they hit. Two, I mean, that's a record-breaking uh, number of home runs. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but you're not going to not be a home run hitter in a you're not going to not be a home run team in a park that is a home run haven, which is what they play in. No, that's that's fair, but I do think I, I, my point was that uh, they broke the last year they broke the record that they set in 2004. When we all know how that season ends. The, um, well, I mean, not I every year, yeah, but here's how it ended. It ended with a very bad pitching performance. They were up three games to love in that series. They did not find themselves with a pitcher to pitch a game that they could. And plus, their their bullpen blew games four and five. They had a lead in game four in the ninth inning. They had a, lead, a two run lead in game five. They did not close out either one of those games. So it was the pitching that lost that series, not the hitting. Well, you know, it's not an either-or. It's not like the home runs are bad and, and the small ball is good. I think a balanced approach. Uh, hey, listen, uh, you, know, you, know, you need clutch, which you can't define. You can't define it from a slugger. You can't define it. When Jimmy Lairitz came back in one game running home runs, no one said, oh, I want to hit singles, okay? They forget that part. The bottom line is clutch is clutch no matter who it is. You need clutch to win championships. If you don't get timely hits, you're not going to win playoff games. That's what it comes down to, but it doesn't matter. It, home runs don't define clutch. The 61 Yankees had 240 home runs. They were a juggernaut. It doesn't confine. It doesn't mean because the 96 team didn't hit a ton of home runs that they weren't clutch. They were clutch, but they also won a lot of big games with home runs. Bernie Williams did. He won, had a walk-off homer. Leyritz hit one games with home runs. I mean, they home runs won games in those playoffs. All right, I, I want to get to more now. I, I really disagree with you on more now. Okay. Let me just tell you what. Um, first of all, he hasn't played a full season since 2008. Um, as you mentioned, this team is already too left-handed. You really would prefer to get a right-hander. There isn't one there, available, but, um, and I don't think it's too left-handed right now. It's, 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 I don't think it is too left-handed, to be honest with you. I think well, you never well, can be too left-handed with the Yankees, and I don't think it's too left-handed. And I disagree for this reason. It's only money. I'm not asking you to break up or give away Sanchez or Mason Williams or anybody like that. No, but you see, it's not about that, though. I mean, according to Cashman the other day, and we all know that the risk can be tricky, but there's a 70% chance that uh, Teixeira is going to come back sometime in May. Um, that is that's Cashman's. Point, that's, you, not, that's, not you, Teixeira, that's not Teixeira's statement. That's, that's Cashman's statement. That's the doctor that he was. Now, now where, where does Morneau play if Teixeira is on the team? Are you going to go with the platoon at DH? No. I mean, listen, that's about as bad a UC thing. roster as you can get. Well, wait a second. First of all, if I wind up, now you're assuming that Hafner hits, okay? Tell me right now, Steve, who's the lefty bat who pinch hits right now late in the game for one of your catches with the game on the line? Who is it? So you're going to have a $15 million pinch hitter? Wait a second. First of all, he's already played 40 games or 50 games at first base till Teixeira comes back. That's if he comes back. Then you're also assuming Hafner hits. Otherwise, Morneau can be the DH and Hafner can be your pinch hitter. But who is your pinch hitter this year when you have Juan Rivera up followed by Stewart and you're two runs down in Yankee Stadium? Who's your lefty who's coming up to win the game? Well, right now, no, obviously they don't have one right now. So that you don't want to go get one. Where do you, how do you keep Morneau on the roster and still have a bench that you can make defense? Why can't I, why, now why, why can't so I, why, first of all, first where's of all, you've assumed. Where's, where's your defensive replacement? Wait a second, first of all, you've assumed that. You, you now are trying to go into the season with Juan Rivera as your everyday first baseman, which the general manager gave me I, yesterday. Not, you're not going to okay. defend Juan Rivera. Well, so that's what he did yesterday. He gave me Juan Rivera as the everyday first baseman yesterday, okay? Now, on top of that, you're worried about the deployment of Morneau, who A, could be there all season, B, which is still a possibility, which you want to go between 30 to 40, and we don't know. Teixeira is the one who gave you the bomb of, I might have surgery. It's his wrist. Now, on top of that, okay, so we don't know that yet, and that's the good part is maybe 40 games. That's the good part. On top of that, you you have to assume for there to be an over an overabundance of lefties that we can't live with. You have to assume that Hafner's ripping the ball, because otherwise he can replace Hafner as the left-handed DH, okay? The one difference is Morneau can play every day at the DH spot, because he can hit lefties. So he doesn't have to be the part-time, and we don't really have a right-handed DH 
DH unless you're counting Nunez as the righty DH who has no power and is unproven. So Morneau is a former MVP, I mean, and, and is worth the risk because it's only money for one year, no money down the line, only one year money, and a guy who is having a good spring and has killed Yankee Stadium, the new Yankee Stadium, absolutely killed it. All right, he's hit seven home runs in 13 games and he's hit 450. And if all that goes right, Morneau at that point could be, that's if Hafner is killing it, okay? Morneau, if Teixeira comes back, which is an if, if Hafner hits, which is an if, then Morneau is your pinch hitter for the second half of the season, which, you know, could turn around if that's the case. He can spell Teixeira, he can spell Hafner, and he can still be a pinch hitter off the bench. Absolutely. But how do you tackle, but, and then what? And now, again, you're using two roster spots basically as DHs. That's how it, you Steve. You bench? don't know, you Steve. Bench? You don't have a lefty right now. Who is your lefty pinch hitter? Mike. Okay, Mike. Somebody gets hurt uh, in the middle of the game. Who's on your bench? Uh, Jeter. Jeter uh, twists his ankle Nicks. again. Who's going in? Nick. All right. And then you have. And who's in the outfield? Your fifth outfield is probably going to be Mason. Well, Juan Rivera, if he's playing all so over guess, the place. So you're, so, you're going with, so you're going with, I guess, 10 or 11 pitchers then? I'm, I, I, Steve, the bottom line is only one, uh, only one you're carrying. Last year, you had guys there at DH and still had extra guys on the bench. You had guys on the bench, including Chavez and, and, and other guys on the bench at times. Sometimes two lefty bats on the bench. There's nothing wrong with that. In Yankee Stadium, in a year where the Yankees have terrible right-handed hitters in the lineup, you are going to see right-handed pitching. What happens when you're coming up in the bottom of the lineup is Rivera, Mesa, and Stewart. You wouldn't like to have some lefties to come out and be able to win the game with a home run? And this is if Teixeira comes back and if half their hits. Neither one are given. Then Morneau is in excess. At that point, he's in excess. That's if the two happen. Otherwise, he's not an excess, and he can DH every day. And he can play first every day. He doesn't need to be out of the lineup. He's not a lefty, a guy who can't play every day. He's an everyday player. He's a former MVP. He's an, MV, he's an everyday player. And he has no contract for next year. It's just a money straight deal at a time when the Yankees need power. They don't have it. They need a first baseman who can play. You cannot tell me you want to go into the season with Juan Rivera playing first base every day. That's what he gave me yesterday. Juan Rivera playing first base. And maybe Mesa as your third outfielder, which means you're going to have Mesa in the lineup, Juan Rivera in the lineup, Stuart or Savelli. Juan Rivera playing first base every day. That's what he gave me yesterday. Juan Rivera playing first base. And maybe Mesa as your third outfielder, which means you're going to have Mesa in the lineup, Juan Rivera in the lineup, Stewart or Savelli in the lineup. Not a left-handed hit. You don't have a left-handed hitting catcher to pinch hit. you got two right-handed hitting catches. And right now, if half is in the game, you don't have a lefty pinch hitter. How is that a formidable bench? The Yankees used to carry Wade Boggs and Cecil Fielder on a bench in the, in, in, at the same time. That was an excess? They carried Tim Raines, Wade Box, and, 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 and Cecil Fielder on the bench at the same time. That was an excess. Now we can't carry anybody on the bench because this is the New Yankees. Now we've got to carry minor leaguers on the bench. This idea that this is some crazy, crazy excess. What if Teixeira goes and gets surgery? And it's his wrist and he's the one who brought up surgery. If the Yankees allow you now to know, right now, that Teixeira's out for the season... How do you know the Yankees aren't playing possum? If the Yankees right now tell you people that he is out for the season, the price of everybody goes up. You might find out three weeks from now that he's out for the season because that's going to, right now, the prices are kept down by the fact that he's not out for the season. Because if he's out for the season, the Yankees have to go shopping. And they might roll, we might roll more than we do. And they would be right to keep the lid on that while they try to trade for a player. But they need a every day first baseman right now on this team whether you're talking small ball don't worry small ball versus long ball because there's not going to be a lot of long ball on this team whether you get a guy to play first base or not or not right now you don't have a lot of home runs on this team you have one legitimate plus 20 home run hitter in this lineup right now every day on the team one 
This is a team that in recent years has had Teixeira, A-Rod, Granderson. Has had guys like Chavez on the bench. Abanez was a 30 home run hitter in the past. Andrew Jones. And right now you're looking at games where eighth inning, ninth inning, you're going to go up there against the right-handed reliever down 3-2 and let, the, let Rivera and Mesa and the Savelli hit? Not one of them taking a shot at the right field wall? At Yankee Stadium? It's not the way you do it. Go back to the days of Johnny Blanche. Go back to the days of Oscar Gamble. Wherever you want to go. Bobby Mercer, Johnny Mize. How many guys you want me to give you? The Yankees are taking shots from the bench for, at that at that fence since they built it. A manager on the Yankees has got to have a left-handed home run hitter sitting there that they can bring in and try to win the game with one swing. That's how the Yankees have been built since that white football wall was built for Ruth. And to go into the year without one is crazy. Four o'clock.